Drobi. We welcome you all, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Peter Katimo, and thank God that we meet with you always, by God's grace, in our Facebook and uh, YouTube, uh, Bishop Peter Katimo and Apostolic Faith Church Bahati. Let's pray. Father, I release blessing on this moment. We pray that your presence will cover every part of this program, and the voice of God will be so clear. Lord, we, I cover myself. I cover the recipient of this message in the blood of Jesus Christ. We destroy every obstacle. And Lord, we pray by your blood that God's children will hear you. People will be delivered. People will be quickened. People will be raised and be established. Lord, we thank you because you are with us. In Christ we pray. Today we embark on the message that we started on the urgency of Hearing the voice of God. We need the voice of God more than ever. More than ever. More than ever. We need God to speak uh, his voice more than ever. And now, last time we, 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 we had the part two. I think now we had part three. And the part three now, we want to finish uh, that aspect. Those issues of... Uh, the, the, the things that hinder the voice of God in the church, in you as individual, what he does, the voice of God. We had tackled one or two issues. And we want now to embark on, on the remaining part. We said, a uh, heart that is not perfect towards God. Perfection means heart that is totally dependent upon God without any other option or alternative. It is, you are so much dependent on God. So much dependent on God. So much, your heart is perfect towards him. And another thing that he does, the voice of God, is worldly affection. And we saw it in 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Things that are in the world are classified in three levels, three categories. The last of the eye, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are the three areas that temptation entered into the life of Adam and Eve. The same, same three, the devil used them to tempt Jesus Christ. Uh, and now, and another thing that he does, the voice of God, is wrong intention. Wrong intention. When you have wrong intention, we see that in Acts chapter 5, when Ananias and the wife had wrong intention in giving. Yes, that's very important. And we see that in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible talks about blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. The pure in heart will see God. Now, another thing that he does, the voice of God, is hardness of heart. My brother, my sister, you need to know when your heart is hard, when your heart is stubborn, when your heart is insensitive, when your heart loses consciousness of the Holy Spirit. It becomes hard. When your heart forgets, if you see, if you read Matthew, Mark, uh, Jesus one time addressed the issue of, of the disciples when their hearts were still hardened. When Christ said, are your heart still hardened? We see that in the scriptures, when, and Christ, um, uh, Christ asked, asked these questions, are your heart still hardened? Because he had fed uh, uh, so many people with the bread. Eh? 5,000 with five pieces of bread. And, and, and you notice Christ says something here. That is Mark chapter 8 verse 15. He says, then he charged them saying, take heed, be aware of the living of Pharisees. 
and Herod, verse 16. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason? Because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive, nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Is your heart still hardened? Is your heart still hardened? That's an issue. Is your heart still hardened? Christ, Christ talked about a condition that is caused by hardened heart. He said, you, uh, you are, uh, do you not yet perceive? Do you not yet understand? Are your heart still, is your heart still hardened? Now, if you check Mark chapter 8 verse 19, the Bible says, uh -huh, Having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? Look at the outcome of hardened heart. One, you are unable to perceive. You are unable to understand. Uh -huh. You are unable. You have eyes, but you cannot see. You have ears, and you cannot hear. And at the same time, it hampers your ability to remember. Remember when David was confronted by Saul, when he claimed that he is able to remove or to kill Goriath. And, 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 and Saul said to David, David, whose son are you? And he narrated to David how, how, Goliath, how Goliath has been involved in warfare since childhood. And, um, and sort of tried to discourage David. He was trying to show David, you don't have enough credentials for this war. You don't have enough updates for this war. You don't have, David, you don't have. But David, because his heart was not hardened, he perceived and he remembered. He said, I am the one who one day killed bear. I'm the one who one day killed lion. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be one of those. I have to do, if I dealt with the lion, if I dealt with the bear, I will deal with the Philistine. You see, David was able to perceive. David was able to remember. And when your heart is hardened, is hard to hear the voice of God. Hardened heart. And that's the Hebrews 4 7 says, do not let your heart be hardened. Another thing is during worship. These days, people are not worshiping with a name of healing God. They are worshiping with a name of becoming joyous. They are worshiping in the name of receiving peace, receiving joy. But now the Bible, if you check the program, the way the temple used to operate, we say you enter the gates of temple with thanksgiving in your heart. You enter the courts of the temple with praises. You enter the third place. Bible says, when you enter the third, the, the first three of entrance or appearing before God was worship and bow before him. Worship and bow before him. Let's go back again. The first part, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Second part, enter his courts with the praises. The third part, after you praise and praise well, now you enter worship. It says, worship and bow. You know, sometimes I wonder in the church, the more people praise, the more they become stiff. And the more they joke around. And the more they get used to the altar. But the Bible says here, as they drew to the altar, they worshipped, and because of God's presence, and they are being sensitive to God, they had to bow before him, even falling before him. That's one of the problems we have now. 
Literally, we have church elders bow before God. Literally, we have bishops, even worshippers, fall prostrate before God. Apostles used to do it. Prophets used to do it. Moses did it. Elijah could fall before God. These days, we are so stiff. Worship is like not drawn from the throne of God, but drawn from what we do. And we need to know that that step is worship and bow before him. And in that place, that's what the Bible says, do not harden your heart. You enter the fourth aspect of worship, where you need to deal with your heart, cause your heart also to bow, cause your heart to bow, cause your heart to soften, cause your heart to be sensitive, cause your heart to revere God, command your heart to bow, command your heart to develop sensitivity to God. Do not harden your heart. And that's the time when now you go to what we call the voice of God. And the fifth part in church worship is what we call praises. Now, now these praises are different. We call them numa, numa praises. Where somebody, after now you hear the voice of God, hallelujah, the gifts in the church are quickened. I say, you friends, I have been preaching for the last more than 40 years, and I say what we used to do, we, it has to come back. Whereby you enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praises, enter into his presence with worship and bowing before God in reverence to him, and then enter the holy place with a soft heart that is melting before God for a start for the level. You need to hear the voice of God. And after that, I remember, and it should happen even now, the gifts start working. It is at that fourth level, whereby any gift in the church of a person who is awake, gift of healing, gift of prophecy, gift of word of knowledge, they start working. How do we take the church these days to the fifth level of worship? Whereby the fourth and fifth, the fourth one, no, the third one is worship him and bow before him. And the fourth one is hear the voice of God. And the fifth one is praises that are mixed with the manifestation of gifts. That's why the church, you find now the church, the program has changed. Prophecy is being released. People are being cleansed. Doubts and fear disappearing. God's presence becoming real. Miracles happening. Revelation of God's will being made, made open. I tell you, that stage is important. We need to have, for us to hear the voice of God, we need to have right worship. Let's start in the temple today. I say right worship. And one area that really disturbs my heart, is the third part where the Bible says, worship and bow. We really have people worship, not just singing a, a chorus or a simple, eh, moody, soft song. It is response to God because God descends when good praises are offered by People who are dedicated and certified. And when it comes, we don't just tell people, please, please, uh, let's, let's stop praising, let's bow. No, no, no. The presence of God will cause us to bow. And at that level, the Bible says, do not harden your heart, for God is speaking. It's when God speaks, impartation comes. When God speaks, there's clear way for our faith. When God speaks, people are joking around, no. The seriousness of God's presence. When God speaks, but biting and all filthy things in the church disappear. When God speaks, you either run away or submit. When God speaks, you either repent or you are judged. When God speaks, he follows his voice to perform it. Because the voice of God is not just word. The voice of God carries his performance. And that's why 
One thing that really brings problem in church worship that hampers and hinders the voice of God is when we don't bow before God and when we do not praise God to a level where he can descend. People can offer good music. I've seen it. Good music. I tell you, powerful one. But I've always discovered some of the good singers who offer very good music, when it comes now to real experience of God, let me tell you what happens. Somebody can have very good music that moves the church into tears. But when it comes now to real encounter with God, you experience dryness. Why? Because of the character of the singer. There are good gospel singers who are fornicators. Good choirs who are, who are diviners. And when we worship and feel, now we should now enter his presence. You experience vacuum. You experience void. You experience lack. You experience darkness. Because you cannot have real breakthrough in worship where you hear the voice of God if the character of the one leading or the people leading is not right with God. Real experience and manifestation of God involves through worship God in truth and in spirit. Now, let's finish this part and then we embark on other issues. Unforgiveness. If you are so bitter and you retain bitterness in your heart and you don't want God to melt that part in your heart that demands that you forgive somebody, forgive your wife, forgive your relatives, forgive your parent, forgive your son and daughter. There's an area in your heart that you don't want the Holy Ghost to touch. The voice of God will not appear. And forgiveness stops God's voice. No way, God cannot perfectly speak while you still have uh, bitterness. Another thing is unregenerated conditions. Unregenerated conditions. And regenerated conditions are conditions of the heart that are too low. Too low. Spiritually low. Eh? Spiritually low. Whereby you are low to an extent that sensitivity to the voice of God or response to the voice of God or consciousness of the Holy Spirit is hard in your life. Very hard. And that's a problem. Because the Bible says there's something very important when somebody is awake in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 16, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are God's children. Hear the voice of God. Hear this phrase. One of the, one of the key network, point of contact, is what is in Romans 8.16. Holy Spirit, bearing witness with my spirit, with your spirit. Holy Spirit, capital S, bearing witness with your spirit, small s. That is a very good opening to the voice of God. And if that is low, you are spiritual too low, that the witness of the Holy Ghost in the heart, confirmation, Eh? When the Holy Ghost just confirms you, you are God's child, I love you, I, I, you know, just God confirming your heart. When that is not there, the voice of God is there. Now, if you go to 1 John chapter 5 verse 10, the first letter of John chapter 5 verse 10. I hope you have your Bible. First John chapter 5 verse 10, the Bible says something very good. It says, I can read for you. He who believes, let's start verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which 
he has testified of his son. He who believes in, his, in the son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given his son. A clear witness and testimony in your heart is very important. You know, if you read John chapter 10 verse 27, the Bible says, Christ said, and we need to know this, friends. This is very clear. When we hear this from the master, Christ Jesus Christ, yeah, Christ, he says, my sheep hears my voice. If you are a sheep, truly, truly, Christ says, those who are mine, my sheep, hears my voice. That is John 10, 27. And, uh, and the Bible says, God promises to give us new hearts that can hear him. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25, God says, I will give give you a new heart. God wants to remove us from unregenerated hearts and raise your spiritual standard and sensitivity whereby you can say the Holy Ghost is bearing witness with my spirit that I'm God's child. And the Holy Ghost is bearing witness with my spirit that I'm going to heal the sick. The Holy Ghost is bearing witness with my spirit that is healing somebody. The Holy Ghost is bearing witness with my spirit that he's going to bless me with money. The Holy Ghost is bearing witness with my spirit that there is way somewhere in this family. The Holy Ghost is bearing witness with my spirit that the church is going to have a revival. The Holy Ghost is bearing witness with my spirit that I'm winning this battle. We need to restore what the Bible says, Holy Spirit, bearing witness with your spirit. When the Holy Ghost meets with your spirit and he puts a voice in your heart. It's a point of contact between human spirit and the Holy Ghost. That's very, very important, friends, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we would like to continue this. I don't know. We want to give you a chance to relax a little bit. And we are back on the fourth part of this message. Uh, we will finish with the diso uh, the. the, the the, uh, the, what he does, the voice of God, and next time, and also embark on obeying the voice of God and the way God can speak to you. Don't miss the next session. The Lord, you bless you.